In the heart of a gray city, there lived a girl who loved to doodle, draw, color, and paint. Every time she saw a blank piece of paper, Mira thought to herself, hmm, maybe. And because of this, her room was filled with color and her heart was filled with joy. On her way to school one day, Mira gave a round apple to Mr. Henry, the owner of the shop down the street. She gave a flower to Miss Lopez, the lady with the sparkling eyes. She gave a songbird to Mr. Sachs and a red heart to the policeman who walked up and down the streets. On her way home, Mira taped a glowing sun onto the wall hiding in the shadows. The city was less gray, but not much. I like this. The next day, Mira saw a man with a pocket full of paintbrushes. He gazed at the wall. He looked at her son. He held his fingers up in a square and peered through them. Hmm, he said thoughtfully. What do you see? Mira asked. Maybe something beautiful, the man replied. Then, just like that, he dipped a brush into the paint. Bam! Pow! The shadows scurried away. Sky blue cut through the gloom. The man's laughter was like a rainbow spreading across the sky. Who are you? Mira asked. I'm an artist, he said. A muralist. I paint on walls. I'm an artist too, she told him. He handed Mira a brush. Come on then. Mira dipped it in the loudest color she saw. Yowie! The wall lit up like sunshine. As the man drew pictures on the bricks, Mira added color, punch, and pizzazz. Soon Mr. Sachs joined in. Then came others. Everyone painted to the rhythm. Salsa, merengue, bebop. Even Mira's mama painted and danced the cha-cha-cha. The whole neighborhood became a giant block party until the policeman walked up. Excuse me, he said. The music stopped. Mira put her brush down. They were surely in trouble. The officer cleared his throat <clears throat> and then paused. May I paint with you? He asked. So Mira handed him a brush and the music started again. The teachers and the papas jumped in, babies too. Mira and the man handed out brush after brush. Color spread through the streets. So did joy. Wherever Mira and the man went, Art followed like the string of a kite. After they colored the walls, they painted utility boxes and benches. They decorated sidewalks with poetry and shine. And everyone danced. Together, they created something more beautiful than they had ever imagined. When their clothes were splattered with a million colors, everyone sat down to rest, except the muralist, his eyes sparkled. You, my friends, are all artists, he told them. The world is your canvas. He smiled wide and then pulled everything together in big sweeping motions. His paintbrush was like a magic wand. When he was finished, Mira added one more bird way up in the sky. Maybe, she thought, just maybe. A note from the authors. Maybe something beautiful is based on a true story. At one time, the colorful East Village near downtown San Diego, California did not have murals on the walls, nor quotes from Gandhi, Martin Luther King, or Cesar Chavez written on the sidewalks. Benches were not the works of art that you can see today, and many people living in the area were not part of the vibrant community that they are today. Instead, the streets were gray and drab. But one day, a husband and wife team, he an artist and she a graphic designer and community leader, moved in and transformed their neighborhood into a place of beauty. 
These are actual photographs of some of the murals. And here's an actual photograph of a little child helping to paint the murals. Rafael and Candice Lopez designed a plan to bring people together to create art so that their neighborhood could become a better place for all to live. They held meetings in their home to share their idea and everyone was invited. The police officers, graffiti artists, teachers, single parents, children, homeless people, and more. And with the help of many, the Urban Art Trail was born. Volunteers of all ages, races, and walks of life committed themselves to a common goal, reviving their community through art. First came murals entitled The Joy of Urban Living and the Strength of Women. Then the community painted utility boxes and benches and bright colors, and they crafted mosaics around the trees along the streets. Raphael and Candace had noticed that in their neighborhood, people often looked down on the ground as they walked. So they painted poems and calligraphy on the sidewalks. Little by little, the entire neighborhood became a work of art and an inspiration to those who lived there. The impact of art in the neighborhood grew. Some of the painted benches were auctioned off and the money provided classes and scholarships for students who had an interest in art. Visitors came to admire and donations, big and small, came in. And what had once seemed to be an impossible dream became a trademark of San Diego's East Village. The movement prompted by the Urban Art Trail spread far and wide. Communities throughout the United States have commissioned Raphael's murals and neighborhoods as far away as Canada and Australia have implemented the model of community-based art. Maybe Something Beautiful was illustrated by the muralist who inspired it. It was written in honor of Rafael and Candace Lopez and all the quiet leaders in our neighborhood. It is an invitation to transform not only the walls and streets of our cities, but the minds and hearts of communities. And this book is dedicated to Alma Flor Ada, partner in Magical Transformations, for Elliot and Sylvia who bring art and light into my life every day and for the playground of possibility.